Welcome, Highbury and friends. If this is your first time visiting Highbury Congregational Church Cheltenham YouTube channel, if you like what you see, please subscribe and share to your social media platforms. It will help to extend our reach. Thank you. We're going to be journeying with James, and we begin with James chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. From James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, greetings to the twelve tribes dispersed throughout the world. It is thought that James was writing a circular letter that was directed at Jewish followers of Jesus who were Greek speaking. My friends, whenever you have to face all sorts of trials, count yourselves supremely happy supremely happy in trying times when our plans have been turned upside down, our hopes for a holiday, our income perhaps cut off, not being able to see those that we love. Whenever you have to face all sorts of trials, count yourselves supremely happy not able to meet with our fellow Christians in our home, in the church building, count yourself supremely happy. Oh God, give me help. I don't feel very happy just now. But this is the grace we need. Why should we count ourselves supremely happy? in the knowledge that such testing of your faith makes for strength to endure. Strength to endure. The testing of faith. I'm not a medical expert, but I believe that whenever we push our bodies, whether it's through uh, the lifting of weights, core exercises, running, cycling, swimming, whenever we push ourselves to the limit, we often get achy muscles. And that's because the muscles have experienced a little tear and it's not a bad tear it's a good tear and when the muscles heal themselves there's a building up of the of the fiber and the strength within them and so the testing of our faith the trials that we experience are like little tears and sometimes they feel like big tears and it's extremely difficult and challenging and we find it uncomfortable those of you who've ever uh, run or or done any kind of major um, exercise, you know that it's not easy, uh, that it feels a bit achy afterwards, but we feel better and we grow in our strength and in our endurance. And so it is with faith. Let endurance perfect its work in you, that you may become perfected, sound throughout, lacking in nothing. In this perfection, we're not talking about reaching an end point. We're talking about maturity. We're talking about a soundness, a kind of health within our being. If any of you lacks wisdom, hmm, lacking wisdom, certainly feel a bit short on it at the moment. But if any of you lacks wisdom, the ability to know how to do what is right and to act well in the moment in God's way, he should ask God and it will be given him. For God is a generous giver who neither grudges nor reproaches anyone. And yet so often I think that God is a bit of a scrooge, that he holds back. But that couldn't be further from the truth. God is generous. Are you lacking in wisdom? Go to God. God will give you insight. But he who asks must ask in faith with never a doubt in his mind. For the doubter is like a wave of the sea, tossed hither and thither by the wind. A man like that should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is always in two minds and unstable in all he does. Now, after my sermon yesterday, when we looked at uh, Jesus' final words to the eleven, they worshipped, but some doubted. So why does James say it's not okay to be a doubter or to have our doubts? I think that James is actually talking about something fundamental here, about a choice. And it's a choice that's expressed in the Qumran scrolls, 
in the Qumran scroll uh, number 1, verse 8, roughly 8 to 10, and also in the Didache. There are two ways of life, and Jesus talks about it in the Sermon uh, on the Mountain in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, where he talks about the, the wide way and the narrow way. And the wide way is the way of living for myself, doing what suits me, um, fulfilling my own desires. The narrow way is the way of love. And in the Didache, it's, it's quite helpful to read it. There are two ways, a way of life and a way of death. The narrow way and the wide way. And the difference between these two ways is great. The way of life is this. Thou shalt love first the Lord thy creator, and secondly, thy neighbor as thyself. And thou shalt do nothing to any man that thou wouldst not wish to be done to thyself. Love God, love your neighbor, and do to others as you would have them do to you. The way of death is quite different. It is evil and in every way fraught with damnation. Gentleness and patience are beyond their conception. Knowledge of their creator is not in them. They turn away the needy and oppress the afflicted. The way of death is the way of selfishness, of not loving God. And so not being double-minded, having doubts, being tossed on the waves of the sea is, I can't make up my mind whether I love God or whether I love the way of death, whether I want to follow the way of life or the way of, of selfishness. And that is the choice that we have to make. So as we move into this new week, as we face the challenges of living with uh, lifted restrictions, as we continue to be engaged with Black Lives Matter and all of the uh, discussions, uh, the criticism of those who are trying to do their best in, in government and in public service, in the police, uh, in our health services, as we move forward, may God give us patience and teach us through our trials to rely on him and to develop endurance and to know his wisdom. So we're going to pray together the prayer of St. Brendan, the patron saint of seafarers. I think his words are very appropriate for us at this time. Let's pray. Help me to move beyond the familiar and into the unknown. Give me the faith to leave the old ways and to break fresh ground for you. Christ of the mysteries, I trust that you are stronger than the storms within me today. I will trust you in the darkness and know that my times, even now, are in your hands. Tie my spirit to the music of heaven and somehow make my obedience count for you. And together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore.